What's going on guys? Well if you watched my last video I mentioned that I was going to be getting a new firearm and here it is. I chose the LWRC M6A2 chambered in 556. Uh, I chose that one over the 6.8. I was thinking about the 6.8 but I decided to go with the 556 since I already have a uh, AR chambered in 556. This is pretty much just going to be an unboxing. I'm not going to uh, take it all apart and show you internals like a review type uh, video. I'll save that for later after I get some range time with it. So I'll try to make this somewhat quick. So let's crack it on open and see what it comes with. Um, now if you guys have been looking at pictures on their websites or just pictures online of this certain model, you might notice right off the bat that it looks a little bit different. And unfortunately that's because it is. I actually uh, ordered two of these rifles and when I say that I don't mean that I have two of them. Pretty much what happened was I ordered the first one off of Bud's Gun Shop. When I got it, uh, when I got it sent to me, well first of all on their website it said that it was supposed to come with a Voltor E-Mod stock and a Myad pistol grip. When I received it, it did come with the Myad, but it didn't come with the Voltory mod. It came with a stock made by a Bravo company called the B5 Soap Mod. And um, to be honest with you, I just wasn't a fan of it. It looked pretty cheap to me. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what it looks like in a couple minutes, but I just wasn't a fan of it. Uh, besides that, there was a couple scratches on the, the fire firearm itself, so I sent it back. And I got this one, which is the second one, off a different distributor. Of course, there's, a <laughs> there's also ups and downs with this one, too. The upside, the big upside I should say, is it was a lot cheaper than the first one. But the downside of it was not only did it not come with the Voltor E-Mod, but it didn't come with the Myad pistol grip either. It came with the Magpul MOE. So that's a little that's a little bit of a step down from the Myad as well. But uh, it is what it is. So um, I guess if you guys are looking for this, if you guys plan on buying this firearm and it says Voltor stock and, and Myad, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you guys will get lucky and... Get one with the Voltor and the uh, and the Myad, but I guess these are just how they're shipping them out now. So, it's like I said, it is what it is. But another thing is because because it was so cheap, I got something else to show you really quick. <laughs> I picked up something else right away because of just like I said because it was so cheap. I'm not gonna say prices on uh, on how much I bought them for, but what I will say is these two guns put together cost less than the MSRP of the LWRC itself. So I did get a hell of a deal. What I got for the second one is the Smith and Wesson MMP Pro Series Core. I'm pretty sure right off the top of my head that Core stands for Competition Optic Ready Equipment, and the reason that it stands for that is this firearm comes uh, on the top of the slide. It comes milled out, ready to accept uh, reflex sight or dots, dot, whatever you want to call it, dot scope, dot sight. Um, it, it accepts five different ones, I believe. The few, I think I only know three off the top of my head. I know uh, the Trijicon RMR, Delta, what is it, Leopold Delta Point, and something called J Point are three of them. Um, and then what kind of sets this one off a little bit more than uh, than the other MMP series is it comes with um, what's it called? Stippled palm swells, and the same thing. It comes with small, medium, and large. This is the mediums, uh, the small and the larger in the in the box, though. Same thing, just like I said about this. It comes with uh, with it milled out, ready to go for a for a sight that you want to put on it. And it comes with suppressor height sights or tall sights, whatever you want to call them. So they're obviously a little bit bigger than normal sights. And that's if you want to slap a suppressor on it, it'll you'll be able to see over the suppressor. And it'll be able to co-witness with, with, with whatever optic you put on it. So besides that, it's like I said, it comes with the uh, medium, or the small and the large medium is already on it. Small and the large is right here. Two 17 round mags. And then this bag right here is the mounts for the different optics. Uh, I think that there's five in here. Four or five. So pretty much every optic gets its own mount. Um, actually, I'll pull this brochure out really quick and I'll just show you. I think it has a list. Yeah, it has a list of them. So let's see what they got. Um, where does it say? Trijicon RMR Seymour STS Leopold Delta Point Doctor. I never heard of that. Insight MDS or MRDS. Never heard of that either. And a J Point. So there's like a little chart and what plate it uses and what screws they use. So there's that. Same thing with this. I'm not gonna not gonna go over it. I haven't shot it yet, so I'll. Uh, I'll do more of a review on both these guns at a later date. For now, I just oh, forgot to put this in. For now, I just want to uh, get a quick video out, just showing you the unboxing and what you get with each firearm. 
Alright, so back to this. In this box, obviously it comes sealed in this green plastic bag. And here you get a sample bottle of Slip 2000 EWL. EWL stands for Extreme Weapons Lubricant. Uh, before I even knew that they came with LWRC products, I bought a couple bottles of this and it, it actually really is good stuff. Besides that, it comes with a little Slip 2000 brochure that shows some of the other products. Um, it comes with a sight tool. The back is pretty much just a flathead screwdriver for the rear sight windage. And they have the front sight tool on the top right there, which is awesome. Uh, it comes with a mag or not Magpul, uh, LWRC sticker. And on the back is their operator's manual. The operator's manual, go manual goes in a, to pretty good depth too with the rifle, so you pretty much know, pretty much know what you want to know about it. It also comes with just I already opened it. Uh, it also comes with just your standard PMAG, it's the MOE edition, so it doesn't have the dust cover or it doesn't have the um, the the plastic uh, see-through plastic window. I think they're called just the window on it. And it comes with their brochure, their little pamphlet. Now I'll show you. Alright, so here we go. Let me try to get my shadow out of the way. This is the first stock that I came with. And I mean, I guess you guys can be the judge, but I just didn't like it. I, th I think that that looks cheap, in my opinion. But um, I'm trying to figure out how, like, what's going on with the whole situation. Because when you look at this one... This is how my first setup came. It was obviously black. I got a full black gun, but it came with that's that's uh, that stock, which is the B5 soap mod, and it came with the my it came with the mod pistol grip, which, is, which it was supposed to come with. Although it was supposed to come with the Voltor. Now, when you come up to this top one, it has the MOE, but not rubberized. I have the rubberized one, not rubberized MOE, and it comes with this stock. It was stock from the first one, but then if you page over. At the Reaper, it comes with the Myad, and it comes with the stock that I have now, which is the Soap Mod Enhanced. So, I, I mean, gauging, gazing through this whole, this little pamphlet right here of the weapons that they got, I don't see any, any of their firearms that come with a, uh, oh, I guess this one does. This one comes with the rubberized MOE. But, I mean, I guess you guys get what I'm saying, that I, I feel like I got... So I got mixed up parts. I guess I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I got the Reaper stock. I got the I guess that was the 6.8. Um, the the M6. Uh, what's it called? MOE handguard or, or grip on it. So I don't know what's going on, man. But uh, it's all good. Uh, I actually do like the grip, so I'm definitely gonna keep that. I probably will end up changing out that stock, but it's fine for now. Another thing that I noticed that I thought was kind of weird was when you take this one, and it's just this one, because I have a shitload of other PMAGs, and they all work fine. So I don't under, I don't really understand. Let's make sure that I'm in. All right, so you put it in. I press the magazine release, and it doesn't it doesn't just drop out like normal. It actually is, is pretty hard to, pretty hard to get out. You really gotta kinda pull on it. Look at that, see, I'm pulling on it right now. So I think that that's kinda weird. I'm not sure if it's, just this model of PMAG, uh, I don't really see too many, like what's, I don't know exactly what's causing that, but it's definitely a little weird. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I'll definitely use the other mags that I have. I have the ones with the windows, and I have some 40 rounders that work fine. But I did think that that was kind of weird, because I also tried that one in my Daniel Defense, and my Daniel Defense kicks it out like it's nothing, so I really don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe, just, maybe the LWRC just needs to get broken in or something, but... That's something to be leery about, I guess. So I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and just go over the rifle really quick. Just like I said, I'm going to try, I'm trying, I'll try not to do a real in-depth, but uh, I will give you some, some of the features. So starting off with the barrel, I did, cho uh, did choose the 16-inch. So it's a 16-inch heavy barrel. It's a 1 in 7 twist. Nightcore treated. It's supposed to be a match grade barrel. And it has a um, target crown on it. So pretty much all those put together is going to equal one hell of a um, hell of an accurate barrel, in my opinion. So we'll definitely take it out and see how it shoots. I plan on uh, zeroing this one and my Daniel Defense in at 100 yards. I pretty, I'm pretty sure I have my Daniel Defense uh, zeroed in at 35, but I chose to back it up to 100 because from the research that I've did, when you, when you zero in at 100 yards, everything closer 
then 100 yards and everything farther away is all holdovers. And what I mean by that is you hold over the target. So, for instance, if I want to hit somebody, or if I want to hit the target in like the chest, you know what I mean? I might have to hold over and maybe maybe aim at like the bottom of the neck. You know, you, know, you guys probably know what I'm saying, hold over. But um, if you choose like a 35-yard zero or 25-yard zero, some of your... Some of your yardage, some of your distance might be holdovers, and some of it might be hold under. So you kind of gotta gotta know. Um, like let's say I'm I'm zeroed in at 35 yards. I gotta know hey, at 100 yards is a hold under, or at 30 or at 25 yards is a hold over. You gotta you gotta remember all that. So at least when you're when you're zeroed in at 100 yards, uh, you know it's all holdovers. But I'm getting carried away right now. I shouldn't have even talked about that because this is supposed to just be a quick unboxing. I'll talk about that in a later video. But um, it comes with. What they call rail skins, pretty much just rail covers. They're not too bad, I guess, but to be honest with you, I'm going to switch them out. Um, I have some of... Sorry. You guys are going to have to look at nothing really quick. I have some of these left over, so I'm just going to throw some of those on. Just because they add on a lot of bulk. A lot of bulk to the, the front end. Uh, they also come with their skirmish sights. I'm pretty sure that they're made by Troy, but LWRC slaps their logo on it. Um, they also have a logo down here, which is pretty cool if this is going to focus. Yep. As you can see up top, M682556. Uh, this is pretty much just tape. I just blocked off the serial number. Not like I'm, a, I'm scared or nothing, but hey, you never know. Um, obviously, safety and fire, safety selector. Um, trigger's pretty nice. Just like I said, this is rubberized, so I'm curious to see how long that'll last. It should be alright, though. All, pretty much all the Magpul stuff is pretty good. I will show you the sights in a second. Now, here's my little pet peeve with this one. This one, in my opinion, does look a little bit better than the first one, the B5 just soap mod. This one being the soap mod enhanced. Now, there's one thing that I think is all right. Now, first of all, let me see. I'm not trying to knock Bravo Company in any way. They have really good products. I love their I love their charging handles. That's something that I'm probably gonna get for this then. Um, they have good products, but I think that this is pretty stupid. Now, to get to these compartments right here that run run down the side, you have to take the stock off the rifle. You have to take the stock off the buffer tube to be able to, you know, I mean, take, and, and as you can see right here, this, it's a tube, and some sometimes you just take off like a little, a little, um, O-ring sealed, like, cap, and you just slide stuff down in the tube. This one, the tube actually comes out, so, you, you know, I mean, when, when you take it out, you pretty much have a tube that you put stuff in, and you push the tube back in to the outside of the stock. I really don't know how to explain it. Um, maybe you can check out some videos on it, but I think that that's stupid that you have to take the, to take the stock off the buffer tube. Uh, I just don't really like that, but it is what it is. Uh, what else can I say about this side? I don't think anything, actually. Just like I said, I want to kind of make this somewhat quick. Let me flip it on over. <coughs> Another thing is they have their uh, enhanced trigger guard. Um, I guess it's made by LWRC. They just slapped their logo on it, and it does look a little bit different than the Magpul ones. So I'm not sure. Um, on this side, the other thing that I like about this is it has an arrow on the other side of your safety selector that shows you that should, pretty much puts yeah it puts an arrow on whether it's safety or safe or fire. So I like that. Um, nickel boron plated bolt carrier, not the bolt itself, just the bolt carrier. I guess they switched it out. They were doing both the bolt and the bolt carrier, but I guess they had some malfunctions and everything like that, so they switched over to nickel boron bolt carrier, bolt carrier, and just a phosphate coated pretty much stock. Uh, bolt now i'm not sure what's up the trigger i don't know if this is nickel boron coated but it definitely is not phosphate coated obviously it's silver so i'm not sure what that is that it might be nickel uh it might be nickel boron but i i'm not positive so don't quote me on that um the top of it this top of the rail right here as you can see the cutout right by my finger right here um all you really got to do this obviously the top is a piston system it's a short stroke and you pretty much those two screws right there you unscrew them and the top kind of just slides forward and, and slides up and that's how you access the piston system um, it's actually pretty cool it's the same thing I mean when I do do the review I'll show you all that stuff but and then supposedly when you slide it back on and tighten down the bolts again it's supposed to be a, what they what they call a return to zero so um, let's say you have this zeroed in at whatever yard when this goes back on it's supposed to be perfectly zeroed again so I'll definitely Definitely test that out. Let me close this guy up. As you can see, this one's not perfect either with the uh, finishes. It has a couple couple things here and there, but it's not that big of a deal. I plan on 
putting it through its paces and it'll probably get some scratches on it anyways. Now let me show you, flip this back over and I'll show you these sights. These sights are pretty cool in my opinion. Now they're not like the Magpul sights where like there's a button right here. You don't press this button and they flip up. You gotta flip them up yourself. But once you flip them up they're in a the lock position and you gotta push the button to flip it back down. So that's something to think about. The other thing that I like is right here they got the American flag which I also think is pretty cool. And uh, let me see how I can show you these sights. One second. Sorry, guys. Alright. So the back one. Let me wait for this to focus. The back one, um, the peep sight. This is the large aperture, obviously. So the cool thing about these sights is it, it's not like the Magpul ones where you, fl you flip the little piece down and it, it switches from the large to the small aperture. But these ones, you pick it up and you twist it. So right now it's pretty much right in the middle. And you keep on twisting it. There you go. Then it goes to the small if it focuses in there you go so that's pretty cool and it also has a little lines down here that shows you where you're at um, if you're in the middle of the, the the sight post or not and the front ones are pretty much like a HK style like an MP5 I haven't shot with anything like this yet so I'm, I'm curious to see how it'll go but I do like the look of it and I think I'll do pretty well with it uh, the last thing that I want to say about this before I cut out this video is the one thing that I did notice is when I have the stock fully extended, the length of pull seems a little bit longer to me than uh, my Daniel Defense for some reason. So I'll actually probably uh, I'll probably set it at I don't know maybe maybe two or three notches out if you know what I'm saying the notches on the buffer tube. So it, it definitely just feels a little bit longer longer to be on, longer to me. God, I'm it's late at night, guys. I'm sorry. I'm slurring my words right now and I'm not even drunk, but. Um, but yeah, it just feels a little bit longer. The length of pull feels a little bit longer. So that's another thing. Maybe you guys want to definitely hold this rifle and everything before you buy it. Uh, now, one thing, I, the one positive I do got to say about the stock, I know I was kind of bashing it a little bit. The cheek rest on it is fucking awesome. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's real nice, man. So that's a plus. And there's there's not a lot of wiggle in it, too. So let me, I'm not going to be able to do this, actually. I'm not even going to try. Um, I'm not going to be able to pull it out with one hand, but once you do get it into pretty much whatever position you want on the stock, there's there's not a lot of wiggle, so that's cool too. Uh, I do have a CTR floating around, but I think I'll keep this stock on it for a little while, and then I probably will end up buying a Voltor then. But rather than me babbling on like I do a lot of the time, I'm just going to cut this video out. Um, I will get back to you guys with this, with both of these weapons whenever I take them out, and I'll do more so of a review on it where I'll take them apart and... Uh, Maybe show you some targets that I was shooting at or whatever. I might even take you guys out to the range and uh, if you guys, I don't know, maybe zero, zero in this rifle with you guys or whatever. But um, we'll see. We'll see what I want to do. But for now, I'm signing off. If you guys are planning on getting this rifle or if you guys already got it and, um, and have a setup like this. Uh, actually, if you guys have this rifle, let me know what setup you, yours came with. Let me know. Let me know what stock and what pistol grip you got on yours, because I'm curious to find out what's going on with this. But it's all good. Um, just like I said, rate, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be back with some more, man. Signing off, guys. Thanks.